There's widespread doubt uh, about whether this administration can be trusted to enforce our laws. And it's going to be difficult to move any immigration legislation until uh, that changes. Last week at their retreat, they outlined a principle of immigration. Well, I guess today he decided they have no principles that relates to immigration. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid enjoying the dramatic change in direction today from House Speaker John Boehner on the subject of immigration reform. And we're back now with the panel. Well, last week, House Republican leaders had their caucus and they released a set of standards for comprehensive immigration reform. Today, as you heard, House Speaker John Boehner said it would be difficult to push any immigration reform this year. George, what happened? Well, I think they're rethinking the whole idea of comprehensive. We're waist deep in the big muddy of comprehensive health care reform, and now they want to do comprehensive immigration reform, and I'll show you what it looks like. That big boy is the Senate immigration bill. It's 1,197 pages long because it answers every conceivable question. It tells you what should be the hourly wage of an immigrant animal sorter in 2016, $9.84, if you're think, wondering about it. They know everything. This is how we used to do things. This is the Homestead Act of 1862, <laughs> settled the American West, it was an immigration bill. It was designed to attract immigrants. To be fair, the <clears throat> copy and the parchment copy in the archives is four pages long, but it's still 1,900 and 1,193 pages shorter than this one. We don't do comprehensive well. We can break it up into little bits, but don't do more comprehensive. Now, it's interesting. Speaker Boehner said today that given President Obama's selective enforcement, and I think that certainly is true, uh, of the rules in Obamacare, that he and other Republicans don't trust the president in terms of enforcing both the borders as well as a path to legalization. Juan, do you think that's what's really going on here? No. I mean, it's such a, a cover story. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. I mean, obviously, a week or so ago, John Boehner thought that he was able to lead his troops towards an immigration deal that was going to be acceptable, doing it piecemeal and getting that through the House in part, and then forcing the Senate to negotiate and had the Senate and had the Democrats waiting, saying, you know what, the president's not going to get involved. We don't want to screw up what John Boehner's trying to put together. What you have now is a situation where Boehner all of a sudden says, ah, you know what, we can't trust President Obama. But gee, isn't President Obama the one who's deporting so many Hispanics at a cost to his pol political stature with his Hispanic community? There's real anger in the Hispanic community at the fact that he deports a record, historic number of people. The two-thirds of the American people who support immigration reform. What you have seen today is Boehner, who was, after the last shutdown, angry and able to speak out against heritage action and all the rest, caving to the talk radio crowd that sank immigration reform under George Bush. That's what's going on. The fact is, Charles, that after... Boehner released and the Republican leaders released this set of standards for it was going to be piecemeal, but it was going to add up to a comprehensive immigration reform that there were a lot of Republicans who said that no matter what he called it, it was still amnesty and that it was crazy to bring up an issue that divided Republicans right in the middle of an election that they look like they're going to do pretty well in. Look, it was one of those rare dawning of sanity among Republicans. The principles, I think, are really good, and I would agree with almost all of them. You know, border enforcement and then legalization, but not amnesty. But the tactics that they have settled on today are exactly right. The point is that this is something you need to wait for next year for several reasons. A, it would fracture the Republicans in a year that will be all of theirs, all theirs, if they concentrate on the one issue which is dividing the country extremely unpopular and is the embodiment of Obama liberalism, namely Obamacare. You don't want to introduce a distraction. Second, you want immigration reform at a time and, and to concentrate now on winning the Senate. Therefore, second, if you win the Senate and you do this next year, you're in a position to actually pass a bill which would be infinitely better than anything you could get today. And then third, the Republicans are absolutely right to say that if you cannot trust the president to carry out the law faithfully, and he hasn't even carried out faithfully his own law, 
which he's amended 16 times and he's not going to c- continue to amend unilaterally and lawlessly. How do you expect him to carry out faithfully a law in which he's going to have to compromise on enforcement? So it's absolutely right. Not this year. Work on health care reform, win the Senate, and do it next year. Isn't it the case that he has deported a record number of people? And don't you think there's a risk to the party of energizing the Hispanic vote? And you have five seconds to answer that. Deportation is irrelevant. The question is, would he enforce the border? There isn't a single indication that he would. And that's it for the panel.